Hello guys and welcome to the Adam Talks YouTube channel. What you're looking at in front of you is the iPhone SE first generation and the iPhone SE second generation. We're going to be having a look today at the differences in the physical aspects of the phones. Nothing to do with the inner specs, you know, processors, um, cameras, anything like that because we just want to have a look at the physical side of things. It wouldn't necessarily be fair to compare the two in terms of the physical because this is four years old, this is less than a month old and obviously this has had um, serious wear but we're just looking at you know the practicalities of it, uh, the ease of use and that sort of thing. Now the quality of this video won't be as good as past ones because I'm recording this on the iPad mini 2 um, because it's the only other thing I can record on. This is what I've always recorded my videos on. This is probably what I will go to unless I am recording this, in which case I will go to my backup of this, uh, which is the obviously iPhone SE 1. I've also got a 5S which I could use, um, but I don't know where that is. So the iPad mini 2 is coming into play. Okay, so we're going to start by not even looking at the screen. So the screens are off at the moment and we're going to look at everything bar the screens. But there are also a couple of things with the screens that are important. And um, that doesn't include size. We're going to have a look at the size of the screens right now. So, um, but let's start with the around the outside of the phone. So obviously on the SE1, we've got um, an aux cable hole, a lightning cable hole or a port. And we've also got the speakers. On the SE2, uh, you can't really see it because of the um, darkness of the case. But if I just lift it up there into the light a little bit, there are um, some holes for the audio. So um, there's two rows on the SE1. On the SE2, there's just the one row. As you can see on the SE2, there's six on each side, whereas on the SE1, there are five holes at the top, five holes at the bottom on the left. And then if you go to the right, there's, I think, um, eight holes on the top and eight on the bottom because obviously the aux cable is stopping you from having more there. They could have obviously stretched it out a bit more, but that's just where they've chosen to go, whereas it's an equal amount on the um, SE2. Um, the charging port's are exactly the same. Um, you know, the SE2 might have higher specs, but in the way that it looks, um, if we just tilt this phone up as well, it is exactly the same. So. Then if we just go and have a look uh, sideways, so you've got the, on the SC2, you've got the volume buttons and also the button that you can, you can toggle it for different reasons. Mine um, puts mine on silent and loud um, and the volume buttons, you've got exactly the same thing going on on the SC1 um, and then on the top of the SC1, you've got the um, button it sort of brings the phone on and off um, and it also acts as the power button if you hold it down. Um, now you have the same thing on the SC2 but rather than it being on the top which is just completely um, plain it actually comes around to the side here but again same thing just on and off. Um, now in terms of the uh, top of the phone so and the well in terms of the front of the phone, um, there's a few differences. Now with the iPhone SE1, this here is actually a button. So you can kind of see, if I don't put my finger on it as much, you can actually see that physically go down. On the iPhone SE2, um, it's not actually a button. If we, you do feel it vibrate, but like it doesn't actually go down. It's well, it does a little bit, but it's not a button in the same sense. It's more like a sensor. Um, Cause actually if you try and push it down with your nail, you, you literally get nothing. It sort of needs to feel like the heat um, or, or the pressure, um, otherwise it just doesn't go down. Whereas with this one, you can quite easily press it down with your nails. So that's a button, that's more of a sensor. You can see it go down a bit, but it almost needs to be triggered. You can choose on the SE2 different ways. There's like three different ways in which you can feel when you press the button down in terms of the way that it vibrates. Um, whereas like with the um, SE1, it's um it doesn't vibrate it is just a button but in essence it's the same thing in the way that you can use like your fingerprint id um this phone it doesn't the se2 it doesn't have face id like some of the newer um iphones so you know having the thumbprint id is pretty essential um a lot of the newer phones um especially like sort of from the um 10 onwards they don't have a button at all um they, they're literally just the whole front of the phone is the screen um and to do like contactless payments like apple pay or um to log into things you use face id which is just very different this doesn't have face id but as it's got the button you just don't need it 
Now in terms of the top of the phone, we just, we're gonna have it upside down just to get it in view. You've got here uh, the sort of speaker for when somebody's talking to you and you've also got the front facing camera um, just by the side of that on the SE2. On the SE1, it's a little bit different. You have got the um, microphone for when someone's speaking to you at the top, um, sorry, at the bottom, and then the front facing camera on top. So if I just kind of have them side by side, um, if I could go the right way around, that would help. They are just that little bit different, but again, no biggie. Now, round the sides, um, this is probably quite obvious when I was going through it, but the iPhone SE1, it's the same design that they use from the 4 um, up to, obviously, the SE, which was the one after the 5S, um, apart from the 5C, which was a bit different. The 5C probably, the design probably is a bit more like this one, but every phone from the 4, so the 4, the 4S, the uh, 5, the 5S and the SE had this exact design, looked exactly the same in terms of size, so like just the flat sides, um, obviously the curve to the top, then again it goes flat and the screen is four inches long, um, and that is sort of the standard design they use for quite a while. Now, the SE, um, it's curved, so um, you can, there's actually like a contour there, it curves and when you look at like the SIM, I'm not going to pop the SIM card uh, holder out, but when you look at it, uh, you can see on the SE2, although the phone is curved, that bit itself is like smack bang in the middle, so it's fairly flat. It's not quite as flat as on the SE1, um, but the SE1 it is sort of wider, so um, it has more propensity to be um, flat on the flat side of the phone, whereas because the SC2 is curved, um, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's, it's thinner, um, but it is still flat. Now, if we look at the back of the phone, um, we've got the start of the SC1, so you've got iPhone SE, uh, you've got the Apple logo, and then you have got the flash, um, which is the little thing there, and then the camera just up here. On the um, SC2, it is exactly the same. I mean, the camera comes out a little bit, it protrudes from the phone rather than just laying flat, and the flash is circular rather than being sort of um, more of a cylinder shape. But again, it's the same sort of idea. Um, and you've also got the Apple logo. It's a bit more uh, difficult to spot, like on the, on the black background, um, but it's basically the same. So that's that. And the final thing is the screen. So um, when you are doing things on the uh, SE2, such as like typing for texting or playing certain games, um, the screen will actually like vibrate when you are um, like doing that. So you can actually feel like a vibration running through the screen. That does not happen on this. So this is coming from someone who's not exactly um, massively into tech. I just um, sort of, I, I know enough about it and I knew enough about the phone to buy it. So I don't know what the technology is inside, but it, I, I would say it's a physical thing. So this, uh, yeah, the screen vibrates when you use it. This one doesn't, so that's clearly something new. But other than that, despite the fact they look quite different and they're a different size, and obviously the SE2 has much better specs inside, the general idea of the phone actually isn't that much different. You've got all the same buttons, you've got the same functions, um, it's just that it's upgraded and it is a little bit bigger. The iPhone SE is four inches tall, whereas the SE2 is 4.7 inches. Now on the iPhone 10 and above, the I was saying this earlier, the screen is the full size of the phone, so you don't have like the button, um, and that sort of allows for it to be bigger. So um, with the iPhone SE2, you don't really get that. You just get sort of the screen is what we can see here, which for me is enough. I mean, if you are using it in your hand, you can kind of get most of the screen. The only bit you can't really get is like the top right without adjusting how you hold it. But um, generally you can get most of the screen. If we're looking at the SC1, I mean, you can literally get like to the top of the screen without even adjusting where you are. Um, so, you know, the, the 0.7 inches does make a difference in terms of the functionality of the phone, but it's pretty much the same. The um, the iPhone 11 is six inches long, so if we look at the, I don't want to damage my new phone, so we'll do this test on the old phone, but this we're talking about the screen specifically on the iPhone SE is four inches. Now on the 11, um, it's 6.1 inches, but that is also the length of the phone because you don't have 
um, sort of like the, the touchpad or anything on it. It's it's just the length of the phone, um, bar potentially the microphone there. So phones have got quite big. You can imagine you probably have to, as this is like 1.3 inches bigger um, than the iPhone SE 2 in terms of the iPhone 11, you're gonna have to be moving it around your hand a lot more for the functionality of it. So I quite like the fact that this is a bit bigger. Um, you get a bit more functionality but it's not six inches. I wouldn't want one that's like 6.1 or the iPhone um, 11 Max or whatever you call it, which is 6.22 inches. It would just be far too big to be able to use functionally. So that's that, that's the end of the video. So that's the physical differences between the iPhone SE 1 and the iPhone SE 2. So if you like the video and you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. And also give the video a like and leave a comment and I will see you in the next one.